بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال المؤلف رحمه الله واعلم أن الله تعالى بحكمته لم يبعث نبيا بهذا التوحيد إلا جعل له أعداء كما قال تعالى وكذلك جعلنا لكل نبي عدوا شياطين الإنس والجن يوحي بعضهم إلى بعض زخر فالقول غرورا وقد يكون لأعداء التوحيد علوم كثيرة وكتب وحجج كما قال تعالى فلما جاءتهم رسلهم بالبينات فرحوا بما عندهم من العلم الحمد لله رب العالمين والآقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على أشف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه يجمعين وبعد and to continue after our short break that we've had due to the travels was the part where the author mentions and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his wisdom does not send a prophet with this tawheed except that he has appointed for him enemies. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that we have made for every prophet an enemy, devils from mankind and the jinn, inspiring one another with elegant speech of delusion. And then the Mu'allif, he says, and it could be that those that oppose, meaning the enemies of Tawheed, possess knowledge of many sciences, books and evidences. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, and when their messengers came to them with clear evidence, they rejoiced because of that which they possessed of knowledge. Uh, our last lesson, uh, Sheikh Salah al-Fawzan, he mentions that this was summarized into two. The reason of why there was enemies of the prophets. It was summarized into two. And we took the first um, affair. And that was due to it being an ibtila. And a test we mentioned. That these hardships and these tests. It makes manifest. And it distinguishes between the truthful ones and the hypocrites and the disbelievers. So this was from the first reason, from the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Sheikh Salah al-Fawzan in his explanation, he brought the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in order that Allah may distinguish the wicked evildoers from amongst the good doers and put the evil wicked ones on one another. So, from these evildoers, Sheikh Salah al-Fawzan, he mentioned briefly as well that they have elegant speech, that they have speech which is beautified, a speech which is camouflaged with falsehood, perceived as the truth in order to deceive the people. And... That was just a little brief um, recap on what we took last lesson. So, so what we want to focus on now is the second affair. So the first affair was regarding these enemies from their weapons is they have elegant speech. And they are there in order to put a mankind to test and trial. And even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge is all-knowing, of what is in the heart of the people, but he is a against themselves. Al Amr al Thani, the second affair, wa huwa al Ajib, and it's something which is astonishing. The second affair, and the du'at al Baatil yakun induhum alum, that the callers of falsehood, that they have with them some alum, some sciences, in their books. And they may bring about argumentation, proofs for their arguments to the people of truth. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in that statement, فَلَمَّا جَاءَتْهُمُ الرُّسُلُ That when the messengers came to them, meaning who? To the kuffar, to the disbelievers, بالبينات, with clear proofs, proofs, that was reality, which was knowledge and clarification. What happened to them 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَرَحُوا بِمَا عِنْدُهُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ And he says that they rejoice because of what which they possessed of knowledge. Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan, he says, this knowledge is what they inherited from their forefathers and their fathers. This is what was present in their books. And this is what was uh, passed down to them. وَهَذَا الْوَاكِ الْعَانِ and this is the reality of today. The reality of today. If we was to see the books of the people of falsehood, Kutub al Jahmiya, like the books of the Jahmiya and the Mu'tazila and the Asha'ira and Shia, it mentions in their books they bring what? Hujaj Murakkabah, Muzifa. They bring within their books false and complex proofs in order to deceive the people to deceive who the one that, that, that it does not possess knowledge or have knowledge they deceive and fool these type of individuals regarding the rhetoric speech and logic reasoning is what they heavily depend upon. They have made that their asal. They have made that which they base their arguments upon. Rhetoric, speech and logic. And they have made that to be the correct knowledge. They have made that as a base. This is what their foundation is. They have made that the correct foundation, which is rhetoric and logic. Then we have the statement of the author, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Wahhab, rahimullah, إِذَا عَرَفْتَ ذَلِكَ عَرَفْتَ أَنَّ الطَّرِيقِ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى لَبُدْ لَهُ مِنْ عَدَاءٍ قَائِدِينَ عَلَيْهِ If you know that the path of Allah will always have enemies and opponents upon it, people who possess, Allah subhanAllah, how? What, what is ajeeb, ikhwan? As a side note, before I translate. That while reading this, it made you realize the virtues of Shaykh Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab, rahimullah. That he could compile such work that was so beneficial for his time and which is applicable in our time today. As if of those he was talking about the people of our time today. Look what he says. He says, if you know that the path of Allah will always have enemies and opponents upon people who possess elegant speech, and that is the way of the people of Hawa, Ahl al Bida, they have elegant speech because they, we have mentioned in the previous lessons, they make this elegant speech likewise a foundation of their dawah to capture the people. So he says, they possess elegant speech. And knowledge and evidence, then it is upon you that you learn enough of the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will enable you to arm yourself with a weapon that you can use to confront these devils, whose leader and chief said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will surely sit waiting for them upon your straight path. And then listen to what he says, the shaitan. Then I will approach them from before them and from behind them and from their right and from their left. And you will not find most of them to be grateful. They will not be grateful servants. Sheikh Salah al-Fawzan, in that regard, he says, he said, according to their claim, who are they? Ahl al batil people of rhetoric and logic in their reasoning. He said, according to them, the proofs of the Quran and the Sunnah are presumptive proofs, i.e., Proofs that are based upon assumption 
and it is not something which is cogent, meaning something which is yaqeen, something which is sound and correct. Wahada min tamam al fitna. Look what they've said there. Sheikh Saleh Fawzan said, This is precisely the fitna of what they are doing. Because they are now saying that the adilla from the Quran and the Sunnah is not something which is sound, cogent, solid that we can take from. But rather, it is based upon assumption with them. This is what they say. Sheikh Saleh Fawzan says, This is precisely the fitna of how they bring their falsehood upon the people. Because the reality is opposite to what they are saying. What the, the reality is that the adilla of the Quran and the adilla of the Sunnah that is what is sound and solid. That is something that there is no shak in. As for what they are claiming to be sound, which is the proofs, controversial logic proof, that they only brings about doubt and brings confusion and turmoil. And that, in essence, Ikhwan, is the dawah of the people of rhetoric. All they want to do to you is to confuse you. To bring about turmoil and leave off the text of the Quran and the Sunnah. And as you will see later on, Sheikh Salah Fawzan explains regarding the power and the strength of the Quran and the Sunnah. This is why the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he always used to say in the beginning of his sermon, what did he say? Fa in al astakal kalam kalam Allah. Wal khair al hadi hadyu Muhammadin Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That the best speech is the speech of Allah. The best guidance is the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But what do they want to do? They want to remove that. And they want to replace those two fundamental things that the Muslim has. That is, Wahi Munazil Min as Sama. That it is revelation that has come down from the heavens. They want to change that and replace it and bring a foundation of what? Rhetoric, reasoning and logic. Using their mind and their intellect. Sheikh Salil Fawzan says that type of reasoning, that foundation will only bring about doubt, confusion and turmoil. Which was acknowledged from them at the time of death and at the time of them repenting and those who returned and retracted from rhetoric speech. So if these individuals meaning Ahl al-Batil, that if they possess elegance in their speech and in their proofs and in their arguments and in their books, فَلَا يُلِيكَ بِكَ أَن تُقَابِلُهُمْ وَأَنْتَ عَزَلْ He said, if, if you know the people of rhetoric, they are elegant in speech, they bring about rhetoric reasoning, that they are very good at doing, then it is not befitting for you to confront these individuals while you are unarmed and defenseless. That's what Sheikh Salil Fawzan is saying. What does Sheikh Salil Fawzan mean that you are defenseless and you are unarmed? Does it mean that you, you cannot meet these individuals if you're not carrying an AK-47? What is the intent here? Huh? Ilm. Ilm of what? So if you do not have that, it is not befitting. It's better that you do not encounter such individuals from what they possess of their arguments and their elegant speech. That it is upon you that you learn from the book of Allah and from the sunnah of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that which will invalidate their arguments and proof. So let's just stop there for a second, Ikhwan. It's clear to us that the weapon of the Muslim, that which would distinguish, for example, a person to be of strength and he's armed 
is the ability of him possessing the knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah. The more Quran and the Sunnah you have, the more dangerous you are, and the more position you are to defend this religion against these people that come with rhetoric kalam. And the little knowledge that you have of the Quran and the Sunnah is how weak you are. But Sheikh Salah al-Fawzani says that we should take from the source the Quran and the Sunnah. This will invalidate their arguments. He said, these individuals who say that Iblis is their Imam, the Shaitan Iblis is their Imam, the one who was at the forefront when addressing the Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Most High, when he said that surely I will sit and wait against them. Against who? Bani Adam. Human beings. This is the conversation now that the leader of them is having with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he will sit and wait against them. And what will he do? Upon wait to sit on the straight path. That path that leads them. Now look at the shaitan. He will sit and wait upon the path. What path did he say? Did he say sarat al-batil? Sarat al-mustaqeem. So he will wait on that path. And try to come. So what does he mean by the Salat al-Mustaqeem? Ahlul Ilm, they say that try to take Bani Adam away from the truth within the truth in the form of religion. Wallah, dangerous. And look how dangerous shaitan is. That he promised that he will take the people away from the straight path with al-Bism, with the name of the straight path. So making people believe that they are getting closer to Allah, making people believe that they are doing good, but in actuality, they are being removed from the straight path. And then he promised that he will come to them from amongst them, in front of them and from the back of them, and from the right of them and to the left of them. And then he even says as well, that you will not find most of them as thankful ones, i.e. you will not find them to be dutiful towards Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sheikh Salah al Fawzan he says regarding this verse, he mentions Ta'ahad al Khabith annahu so you hawil idalal bani Adam. He said, the repulsive one, he pledged that he will endeavor, meaning that he will seek to misguide Bani Adam, the children of Adam, mankind. He took a pledge. And likewise, his followers. From amongst mankind, the shayateen, from amongst mankind, those people of the books of misguidance, those individuals with deviated ideology, yakumun bi amal al iblis. What do they do? They carry out the actions of iblis in order to lead astray the people. So Sheikh Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab rahimullah ta'ala, he then says, وَلَكِنْ إِذَا أَقْبَلْتَ عَلَى اللَّهِ He says, however, but if you was to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pay close attention to his clear proofs and evidence, then, this, then do not fear or grieve. So Shaykh Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab rahimullah from the 12th century, all of that time there, was saying regarding these people of rhetoric speech, these people that would try to come and take you away from your deen, the shayateen from amongst mankind, he's saying that if you was to turn to Allah and pay close attention to his deen, to the book and to the sunnah, then these people... They cannot have any effect upon you and you shall not fear or grieve against them. And then he quotes the verse, Inna qayd shaytan kana dha'ifa. Indeed, the plot of the shaytan has always been weak. The plot of the shaytan has always been weak. Just before we start, Ikhwan, to the explanation of what Sheikh Salah al-Fawzan he mentions, there's a fa'ida that I want to mention. And it's a father, a, fa'idah, a benefit that we have taken from the scholars and it has also become manifest in our day-to-day -day lives. And that's especially with those individuals 
who for example may be possessed or fear these shayateen from amongst the jinn that's the first category and the second category is the shayateen of ints of mankind the first one regarding the jinn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that the chief of them the greatest of them in power and ability that his plan is weak he is weak why I say this there's been a few occasions that we've had to do ruqya or you have individuals before doing the ruqya they say that I'm I fear at night such and such is happening or I fear I may be possessed and they just have a very very big fear about the shayateen but remember this is something which I always make mention to the brothers and the sisters that try to be of those individuals who are the thankful ones to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that turn back to Allah that have belief in Allah with yaqeen and once that yaqeen settles in your heart wallahi you will not fear let me bring you the hadith of what Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala he mentioned just to give you an idea of the weakness of shaitan how weak shaitan is and how weak his people are what's collected in Sahih Muslim it's not in the explanation of Shaykh Salah al-Fawzan but I thought I'll bring this fa'ida and it is a hadith not a fa'ida from myself it is the word of the messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Abu Darda he says that the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up to pray and we heard him say I seek refuge in Allah from you and then he said I curse you with Allah's curse three times and then the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stretched out his hand as if for those he was taking a hold of something and when he finished when he finished the prayer the companions are questioned Ya Rasulullah verily we heard you say something during the prayer that we have never heard before Nukta the companions were the ones that were always wanting to learn they always wanted to learn so when they noticed something that the messenger وسلم, did which was abnormal which we've never seen before in his teachings meaning in the prayer he, he said something and he did something in his prayer so they questioned him straight away not question questioning why in order to learn that the messenger وسلم, did something extra we want to know what that is so they questioned him straight away a messenger of Allah we heard you say something during the prayer that we have never seen or never heard you say before and we saw you stretch out your hands so then the messenger Muhammad وسلم, he, he replied by saying Allah's enemy Iblis he came to me with a flame of fire he came to me with a flame of fire and he tried to put that fire into my face. Who? Iblis. So I said three times, I seek refuge in Allah from you. And I said three times that I curse you with Allah's full curse. But he did not retreat on any of these three occasions. Meaning he did not retreat back. And then listen to what the Messenger ﷺ said. This is the shahid of why I'm mentioning this hadith this is the point so the messenger he said I swear by Allah had it not been for the supplication of my brother who is his brother Suleiman had it not been for the supplication for my brother Suleiman what was the supplication of Suleiman Aywa. Aywa, anybody? Aywa? Suleiman requested from Allah that he gives him a kingdom, a dominion that no other messenger would possess. And from that dominion and the kingdom is that he could converse and have uh, dealings with the, sh uh, with, the, with the jinn. 
So when the Messenger of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam remembered that Allah granted him that dua, then it wasn't befitting for the Messenger to do anything with the jinn. And Iblis is from the jinn. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, had it not been for the supplication of my brother, this is the shahid. Look how weak shaitan is. He said that I would have bounded the shaitan. I mean, I would have tied him up and made him an object of sport for the children of Medina. What does that mean? Meaning he would have tied him up in the marketplace and he would have been a game. Something for the children of Medina to play with. To play with. The children of Medina to play with. And this is who? This is supposed to be the one that is the strongest of them. The one that has the most power. So, the shaitan, the iblis, has no power in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. For those individuals who are taking the Surat al mustaqim even he said that I'll come to him from all angles, except for the Salihin, those who adhere to the way of the Kitab and the Sunnah. So in conclusion, the more Quran and the Sunnah that you have, the knowledge and the way you act upon it, the stronger you are against the Shayateen. So that there, Ikhwan, was just a small reminder to let you know, Ikhwan, that if you hold on, and cling on to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is no force, there is no shayateen that can bring about harm to you. And if anything comes to your way, it's by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's permission. So going back to the explanation of Sheikh Salah Al-Fawzan. He says, the statement of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, فَقَاتِلُوا أَوْلِيَا shaytan." So fight against the friends of the shaitan. Indeed, the plot of the shaitan has always been weak. So Sheikh Salih Fawzan, now he says, He said regarding these people, the enemies of the sunnah, these people that possess elegant speech, that upon falsehood, upon falsehood, the Sheikh Salih Fawzan says, even though they may possess strength in their speech and in their argumentation and proficiency in their logic and elegance in their speech, except that they're not upon the truth, they're upon batil. So regardless of all of these things which they may have, whom they saw ala haq. They are not upon the truth. Wa anta and you sahibu sunnah ma dumta tumasakan bil kitabu sunnah. As long as you are clinging to the book of Allah and to the sunnah and you understand the Quran and the sunnah, be assured they will never be able to harm you. Allah strong words. They will never be able to harm you. And then Sheikh Salih Fawzan quotes the verse that the plot of the shaitan has always been weak. However, in order for them not to be able to harm you, Sheikh Salih Fawzan, he says, This requires that you return back to the Quran and the Sunnah. Then you will not fear what they possess by way of the false argumentation. For verily, the example of their false, elegant argumentation is like a mirage. As I mean, Sheikh Salih Fawzan, he quotes some poetry. And a rough translation of that poetry is false arguments that collapse and shatter like glass when the truth opposes it. And each broken piece breaks the other. Meaning that once the haq comes, once the truth comes, then the batil, the falsehood, will vanish. So Sheikh Salih Fawzan, he says, so the mirage, that false mirage which they possess, it will vanish. And it is the example of when the Quran, the Haqq, it comes, the light of the Quran shines over it and the clarity of the Quran will make vanish the mist which they have made 
uh, present and all of that, that mist and that fog, that cloudiness of doubt which they'll bring in will be vanished away. And he uses the proof, the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nay, we fling or we bring down the truth, meaning the Quran against the falsehood. So it destroys it and behold, it meaning the falsehood is vanished. And woe to you for that which you ascribe to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a son. And in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are all proofs to show you that when the Quran comes and the sunnah, that all falsehood will be vanished and destroyed. The statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, say, O Muhammad, verily, my Lord sends down inspiration and makes apparent the truth. The all-knower of the unseen. So Sheikh Salil Fawzan, he says, so the coming of the truth destroys falsehood, whatever it may be. Whatever it may be. So rejoice, Ahlul Sunnah. This is not the Sheikh Salil Fawzan's words, but we say rejoice. That regardless whatever situation that you may be in, whether you are being trialed, not just regarding the ilm, you will be tried by the shayateen from amongst jinn. But when you are trialed with the shayateen, then you think of these principles. If you are trialed by individuals that may be more elegant in speech, because there will be situations where you're innocent, where you've done no wrong, certain circumstances may occur in life that will be heavy upon your chest, and they may even come from people who are close to you. People that may even share the same language and the same deen that you're upon. And certain such situations may occur where you are that one who's upon the truth. You are innocent. But their elegant speech or their position may seem and, and they may overpower you as if for those you are the wrong one. We have, have good tidings to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Cling at these times when you are oppressed. These times when people are wronging you. Or falsely accusing you of things. Or whether you are being trialed with the shayateen. Whatever trial it may be. Just know that the salvation lies and clinging to the sunnah. And clinging to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By doing that, by Allah the truth will be made manifest. Whether it takes a week, whether it takes a month, your innocence upon you being upon the truth will become manifest. And this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you just analyze and look at our deen, Yusuf wasalam, was wrongly accused. After how many years, after how many years did his innocence was declared that he was truthful? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, Look at the trial that she went. And she was upon the truth. She was free from the accusations. But at the time when she was going through the trial, people with elegant speech, people with strong argumentation that was brought forth, overpowered her. Overpowered her, radiallahu ta'ala anha, to the extent that even she could not turn to her father. She could not turn to her mother she could not even turn to her husband Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and all she could do was turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then look due to her innocence due to her what the same principle lihwan she held on to the Quran and she held on to the Sunnah she did not forsake the Quran she did not forsake the Sunnah and she used to say that I know my Lord would declare my innocence. And she said, by Allah I knew, but I thought it would be coming by way of a dream. Some other way. She said, I did not realize or anticipate that the truth would be made manifest through verses of the Quran that would be recited to Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Why did she receive such a tremendous reward? Why did her innocence was made clear that she was upon haqq? Because when she was being trialed, she never forsake the Qur'an. What she learned from the messenger, she held on to. 
what she learned from the sunnah she held on to and she made it applicable in the time of her distress she always used to turn to Allah and look at what happens so this is the sunnah of Allah my brothers and sisters something I want to really really focus upon that whatever trial you may be go through that you may be going through even at times ikhwan where you feel that you are being overpowered and people in better positions or elegant speech have overpowered you, but you're innocent. Cling on to the book of Allah and cling on to the sunnah. And alhamdulillah, that's where the salvation lies. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us of those individuals that when we are trialed and we are going through difficulties, whatever it is, that we may be able to cling firm upon to this criteria, upon to this way that has no crookedness in Inshallah, I think we'll just end on that note because there's, there's a, the new wording of the author. So rather than going into that explanation, Maghrib is close. Then inshallah, we'll resume inshallah next week. But um, there's one thing before we go, one side note. There was going to be a mention of it. And that is that the importance of seeking knowledge. That you have to equip yourself with knowledge. That is your weapon. That is the weapon of the Muslim. That you have the Quran and the Sunnah. So the more of the Quran and the Sunnah that you know, that is the most powerful speech, the most correct speech on the face of the earth. And the best guidance is the guidance of the Messenger Muhammad wasallam. So that is what's going to protect you and that's what's going to help you. So these individuals that want to corrupt the religion and try to come upon the ranks and on the name of Islam, and to distort this religion and to build false principles and then they come with this elegant speech and then they come with these false arguments and rhetoric and logic reasoning then you must in order to protect yourself must have knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah so it is uh, reminded to myself first and foremost a miskeen faqir Allah that how we have to turn back and learn more and likewise, I advise my brothers and sisters that, alhamdulillah, we have been given this hidayah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's take it, take it with strength and hold on to it and cling to it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best.